Howdy Denizens, Crazy Jason here with Kakalaki Movies and The Rough Cuts. And this week, I am reviewing The Thin Red Line. That's right, flying solo this week. Now, I'm a pretty frustrated man right now, because this is the third time that I am attempting to do this review. The previous two times, I went well beyond my 15 minute limit. I could be going all night long. The reason why is because I'm so goddamn passionate about this movie. It's in my top five movies of all time. It's frustrating. I, it's hard to do a review. It's hard to encapsulate this movie. This really isn't a movie that you can do a review about because there's so much in it to talk about. So I'm a little frustrated, but I'll give it a shot. First up, we have... You know, this nice Criterion Edition, one disc, very simple. There's the interior, has a nice little booklet, a couple of good essays, beautiful picture on the inside. Um, let's see, this uh, is one of the best looking Blu-rays that I've seen yet, and that's right up there with uh, Blade Runner, Days of Heaven, uh, The Dark Knight. Um, it's definitely probably in the top 10 Blu-rays released, period. Just eyeball, you know, candy. Um, I'm going to say that uh, it does have a lot of good supplements on it. Um, it has a supplement where the, some of the actors come together and, and they speak about their memories of the film. Terrence Malick himself has, has a clause in his contract where his likeness cannot be used for promotional purposes, which means he doesn't give interviews, he doesn't do commentary, um, you know, he doesn't s speak on camera. So the commentary track they do have is done by John Tall, the, um, or John Toll, the, uh, the DP on the film, and I am curious about listening to that commentary. I haven't done that yet, but I have watched the other features or supplements. I have to say the actors, you know, supplement was pretty good. Casting was interesting. Um, outtakes were, you know, they were interesting, but this is really not the kind of movie where you see an outtake and you say, gee, I wish that had been in there. Like, there was a great little outtake with uh, Mickey Rourke as a sniper, but you couldn't have just put that in the movie. I mean, the way this movie is edited, you'd have to go back and, 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 and just redo the entire film for this one little three-minute scene. I'm not kidding. It's, uh, you know, it's just that way. And, and that leads directly to the next uh, feature that they have on this disc, and that's the editors. They talked to the three editors in the film uh, who edited the film. And um, that's probably my favorite part because this, this movie was really... The magic of this film was created in the editing room, as, as in most films, but in this one especially. Um, the end result was so far off of the original script. I mean, not drastically far off, but let me, let me give you an example. Um, originally, the main character was to be Private Fife, or rather uh, Corporal Fife, played by Adrian Brody. Um, then, um, Malik started to become really interested in Jim Caviezel's private wit. So he decided to sort of make that character the moral center of the film. And that works, you know, fantastic. Jim Caviezel is obviously one of the best actors of his generation. Is, you know, what they say about Sean Penn a lot. I, I tend to disagree with that, but... Sean Penn did do a very good job in this film as uh, Sergeant uh, Walsh. Then you have Ben Chaplin as Private Bell, John Cusack as Captain Gaff in a small but very good role, Woody Harrelson as Sergeant Keck in the infamous I Blew My Butt Off scene, uh, Elias or Elias Cotis as Captain Staros, one of my favorite storylines, um, Dash Mahawk as uh, PFC Doll. He has a significant role in the film and gr a really great actor. His face is just, you know, just open. You know, he's taking in the horrors of the war and everything around him. Um, 
And then, of course, Nick Nolte is uh, Colonel Tall. Fantastic. Um, John Savage in a small role as Sergeant Macron. Um, to watch his descent into an insanity was just, oh, just great to behold. Uh, John Travolta had a really kind of a cameo role as General Quintard. Again, Adrian Brody, as I mentioned before, as Corporal Fife, who basically has no dialogue in the film. His scenes were drastically cut, I imagine. Tom Jane had one scene that was good. Um, Tim Blake Nelson was in it, George Clooney. I'm probably leaving some people out. Um, when the film was announced, it was like a frenzy in Hollywood. All the actors wanted a P. They wanted a role, no matter how small. And uh, coincidentally, this film was released the same year as Saving Private Ryan. But I'm not going to compare those two movies. They're apples and oranges. They're both equally great in their own right. I really don't like it when, when people, you know, get into these pissy arguments about which film is better. That's just kind of silly to me. They can coexist, you know. Um, I, you know, I, I, in the previous uh, reviews that I attempted, you know, I went into detail about which characters and storylines that I love the most. I found that I can't do that. You know, you've got the Nick Nolte and the uh, Elias Cotis, uh, Captain Staros, you know, dynamic where Nick Nolte is screaming, God damn it, go up that hill, Staros, we're going to take this hill, you go all the way now. You know, and, and Elias Cotis is, you know, disobeys a direct order, no sir, I will not do that, you know, um, plays a very gentle man, he's more concerned about his men than he is about the war. Whereas uh, Colonel Tall, while going after the objective set forth by uh, General Quintard in the beginning of the film, his driving force is he wants a promotion. He's getting older. He, he, he started his life as an officer between World War I and World War II. You know, you get promoted very slowly when it's not in wartime. During wartime, you get promoted faster. So he's got this chip on his shoulder. Um, if you've never seen a Terrence Malick movie before, um, he uses inner monologue quite a bit. Um, and as you'll have a character and, and you'll hear their, their inner thoughts. Um, and, and they're usually just sort of poetic musings, but they're awesome because they get right to the center, to the heart of, of the character. Um, the music by Hans Zimmer is... is is awesome, so is the cinematography by John Toll, but no one thing exceeds the other. The great thing about this film is that everything is so harmonious. Every actor, the cinematography, the music, all serve the symbiotic relationship that makes up the film. And you know, I, I just can't say enough about this movie. I'm extremely passionate about it. I, you know, I could go all night talking about this film. I, I don't say that I can really do a review of this film. I can only say that I can talk about this film. Every other review that I did is so much different than the one I'm doing now. Um, I encourage you, if you've seen this film and you didn't like it, you know, to me it's like 2001 or The Godfather. And, um, I mean, they're not similar. But, you know, those are two films that, personally, when I was younger, I didn't really, I didn't get it. You know, people said The Godfather was great. I tried to watch it, couldn't get into it, didn't like it. Um, 2001, same thing, even though I was a huge Kubrick fan. Um, and then, you know, as I got older, I revisited those films, and it clicked. You know, it, it just, you know, and, and when, when it happens, it's like, oh, cinema. And this is one of those films. That's why I encourage you to, to try to go back to it, you know, if, if you didn't like it the first time. And I really encourage you to seek out the Blu-ray. That's really the best way to see it. Um, it's one of those films that if you can sit and watch it straight through without pausing it at the end, or even if you do pause it, um, you know, you just have that, that feeling, that, that deep soul food. This movie is absolute soul food. Um, again, one of the greatest war films, one of the hands down greatest films in my opinion ever made. Um, I'm gonna have to cut it off there because you know if I keep going I'll run over time again but um, comment below, 
let me know what you think. Uh, also, OJ and myself uh, recently did a top 20 talking about top films and everything. If you're curious about that, I'll put a link in the underballs. Um, so until next week, Crazy Jason with Kakalaki Movies. Um, we'll be back to review Dazed and Confused. Until then, the madness never ends.